Welcome to a Foundry Virtual Tabletop development video update. This is the first of what I hope will be a recurring series of video updates keeping the community informed and up to date on how development progress with the software is going. In each video, I'll focus on a single feature of the software and dive into how you can use it during your sessions. This episode is all about the Compendium, an extremely useful way to store data while you're building out your worlds. I'll start the video by loading up a simple existing world file which already has a number of scenes and actors populated into it. In Foundry Virtual Tabletop, a session is run by loading a world. The world contains a number of entities. Scenes, actors, items, journal notes, audio clips. Any entities which are saved in your world database will always be loaded and shared with your players when they connect. Because of this, it's generally a good idea to only populate your world with the entities you plan to use during a given session. But wait, you say. I want to create a massive homebrew world with hundreds of areas and thousands of creatures, characters, and items. That's where compendiums come in. The Compendiums tab is located in the right-hand sidebar under the icon that looks like an atlas. Several compendiums, including this one for basic items, have come included with the D&D 5e system that I'm using as the basis for this world. Each compendium contains a specific type of entity, opens in a small pop-up window, and lists the contents of the compendium in alphabetical order. The compendium is searchable using the bar at the top so you can quickly find the entry that you're looking for. Once you've found the entry that you want, you can easily import it into your world from your compendium by dragging and dropping into the appropriate sidebar directory, in this case, items. You can also import from a compendium without drag and drop by right-clicking on the compendium entry and clicking import. I'm going to pull in a few items into my world from the compendium. Items are not editable while they're in a compendium, but once you have imported them into your world, you can change their attributes to your heart's content. In this example, I'll customize my greatsword a bit and give it a fancy name. Once I've done that, I can drag it onto Dart's character sheet and add it to his inventory. You don't need to import items into your world in order to use them on your characters and NPCs. You can also drag and drop items directly from a compendium onto character sheets. Compendia for item entities will also work for storing spells, feats, classes, traits, or any other type of element which can belong to an actor. Working with items is pretty cool, but I know most players will be more excited about developing rich and complete character compendiums or bestiaries of deadly monsters. Here's a sample D&D 5e compendium that I created. Note that all the entries have the default Mystery Man character token, but just imagine how good a compendium like this would look with custom creature artwork. I can open and preview the character sheets of the monsters in the compendium, they just aren't editable unless I import them first into my world. Just like items, I can bring in an actor from the compendium and then edit it inside my world to easily customize, tweak, or fully homebrew. Once you have an enemy that you're happy with, you can drag and drop onto the tabletop to create a token. For even more convenience, if you want an enemy out of the compendium directly, you can drop straight from the compendium onto your map and it will import the actor and place a token all at once. I think this system strikes a really great balance between having a rich variety of characters and creatures available for use in your sessions, while simplifying session prep by reducing the amount of organization and maintenance you need to do within your world file. I hope you agree. Okay, now for some real cool stuff. Suppose you've created a world full of interesting characters, NPCs, and monsters, and you want to store those in a permanent or shareable way. You can create your own compendium packs on the fly, right from within the world. At the bottom of the compendium tab, there's a button to create a new compendium. This created compendium is proprietary to your own world file, and lets you store entities you may not be currently using, but want to be sure to keep around for later. With this empty compendium in hand, I can start to populate it with all the creatures I configured already for this world. Note that in addition to copying their data, it also transfers their profile artwork and token setup, including details like nameplate, token size, health bar, and vision settings, so that when I pull them back out from the archive, the actors are immediately ready to use in gameplay. You can create as many compendia as you want, so feel free to organize to your heart's content. For compendia you own, you can update archived entries by quickly importing them, making your desired changes, and re-adding the updated entry back to the compendium. The last feature about the compendium system I want to share is how it will help content creators who want to share their work. In Foundry Virtual Tabletop, there are three main types of content you can produce. 
Firstly, systems, which define and implement entire game systems, can come packaged with compendia for core SRD materials that are ready to be used within the game. Secondly, modules extend systems and contribute added functionality. One of the things a module can add are compendium content packs. Suppose as a content creator you wanted to create a pack full of Halloween-themed homebrew monsters. You could create and add those monsters to a pack, complete with custom artwork and backstories, and distribute that module, allowing other players to access all your content. Lastly, worlds themselves can include custom compendiums, which can allow for entirely pre-built worlds or campaign settings that can be shared as complete adventures ready for players to jump in and experience. Okay, that's it for today. Stay tuned for more updates and be sure to check out foundryvtt.com, patreon.com slash foundryvtt, and twitter.com slash foundrynet for all the details. Happy gaming.